All right, good morning. So what we're going to do today is show you how the SpanNet2 project functions work based on any sound or vibration logger from Svantec that has a modem and working with remote communication. If you're hiring the instrument, we'll supply you with a password to the SvanNet servers and a login. So usually it'll be using the login, your email address, and then we will send you a password. So once you receive the password from the AccuVibe staff, copy it and go into the SvanNet web interface using their URL, which will be sent to you also. So once that's done, you can enter the password and press login. Now, by default, it's going to ask you to accept an invitation that we've already set up for you for your project. So press accept. All right. So now once logged in, you're going to have a project list on the left hand side here. So click on that and you'll see however many stations you are hiring. For example, I've got a SVAN 977 sound logger and also a vibration logger. These are all interchangeable of what you want to call them. So basically, first things first, I'll start with the second tab down, which is the status tab. This is where you can start measurements on all of the stations that you have, or you can start them individually. You can also see different measurement states of the station itself. So alerts, measurements not running, the battery state of the instrument, are mains connected, is the GSM quality okay, and also automatic file download is disabled at the moment. We will come back to that later. And also the measurement state is stopped. Um, on the left hand side here we have the first one which is a connection log. This will tell us the instrument is connecting with the Wi-Fi and its IP address. If we go back to the project list, back into the status tab and we press the second tab, that's for the status log of the instrument. That's where you can see battery state, how much voltage is left on the internal batteries of the instrument and also the battery inside the Pelican case. You can see the memory that's left in the instrument, the GSM quality, where the, where the instrument is placed. Sometimes you might not have the best quality. And then that's a bit of an overview of the instrument status and connection log. If we go back to the project list and we see our instruments here. For example, now to get this started, I'm going to press start on the measurements. So this will start both instruments simultaneously at the same time. So we wait for one and then the second one will tick over. So now you can see that the green is running flashing. So every time you log in, make sure that things are running okay. The next part, uh, all these tabs is the main parameters that you guys are going to use. So if you press on configuration, this is where we can change settings of the actual project. So you can name the project what you want, where it is, and what you'd like to see in the view, view status later. So if we keep moving forward to edit settings, this is where you can name each station. So sound log one, the you know, serial number of the instrument, where it is. You can pick it from the Google Maps. If we've shared a login to you, you'll only have the two stations that you can choose from. You won't have any other. Don't delete a measurement point. That'll lose all your data. So if you do want to remove a measurement point, just press none, and then you'll still have the data and data files later on. So what we can do now is press cancel and go to edit station configuration. So this is where you can change settings like you're in the field, you've got the instrument in your hand. This is where you change the instrument settings. If anything needs to be changed, you can do it remotely using the modem that is connected to the instrument inside the login case. So once this is done, this will load up the settings of the station and we'll just wait for that to load. Changeable for what type of measurements you're doing. For ground vibration, for example, that's what we're going to stick to. You've got an instrument clock, you can sync this to the instrument's time. You've got to start sync, you can start it on the 15 minutes, on the hour, just to make sure all of your results are starting on the hour for post-processing later will make it a bit easier. You've got the option for spectrum types if you're measuring some frequencies in regards to vibration. I recommend having your vibration range on low as the vibrations we should be experiencing should be quite low. This is pretty much a default setup for a lot of vibration. If you need to change something in particular, then this is what you'll need to do. But particularly, this is how we send out our vibration loggers with a high pass one filter for acceleration on profile one and also a ground vibration filter velocity one on profile two, which is velocity. Moving forward, storage. This is instrument settings, so integration period for environmental measurements typically is 15 minutes, infinite cycles, so it's going to keep repeating integration period time until you press stop or the measurement ceases. Moving forward, 30 second logger step for vibration is by the DIN standard and it serves, saves memory of the SVAN 958 as it is a little bit limited. 
Um, this is where we can tick on and off what logger parameters we want on. So save the vector, channel one, channel two, channel three, X, Y, and Z, VDV, RMS values, max, min, peak to peak. Um, you've got all sorts of configurable settings here. Channel four for sound with the 958. LA peak, LEQ, all of this can be changed and switched on. If you do change a setting, press slice settings at the top here, and then we can move forward. So event trigger, this is where we want to show you how to set an alarm, an email or an SMS alarm based on a level being exceeded. So for vibration, typically we will want to set a PPV trigger. So what we can do now is hit add an event, hit trigger, and add a threshold. There's all sorts of different settings here that you can choose. You can choose RMS values, you can choose peak values, max values, you can do it one second, time history, summary results. There's all, all of this is interchangeable for what you guys are doing. If you scroll to the bottom, you'll see PPV one second, PPV 15 minutes, summary results, um, all sorts of things. We're gonna do it as default. This is what we do for a lot of clients is the PPV one second. So then we can choose a threshold level plus. Once the level is exceeded, that's when we send out the alarm flag. So you have all of these interchangeable levels. You can choose whatever you would like. So typically for residential dwellings, you know, basic excavations, that sort of thing, five millimeters is the level that we will choose, but this is obviously up to your job. Press OK. So now that the actual condition of the event is set, we will add an action. The alarm flag is for the audio visual alarm. If you want to create that alarm to sound when the log is on site, select that. At the moment, we're just going to do an SMS and email alert. So we will send the SMS and email and that will pop up these actions here. All you have to do is scroll to the bottom, type in your number, 614. Yeah, anyway, below that is an email address where you can punch that in as well. Once again, apply the settings once you're done. This will interrupt the measurement only for a few seconds while the instrument is changing the settings. So wait for that to load. So in the next tab, measurement trigger. This is if you actually want the logger to start measuring based on a trigger level. We don't really use it at all. So if anyone has a requirement for that, then that's up to you. External IO, this is in regards to using the audio visual alarm on the logger. So what you wanna do is you wanna change it. By default, it comes as analog, change it to digital out using the third pin inside the 958 logging case. You want it set to alarm pulse and a hold time for five seconds. So that means the audio visual alarm will hold for five seconds. And once again, hit apply settings. Now that's in the configuration of the instrument. That sh pretty much sums it up. So we're gonna go back to the project itself. The next thing is sharing. So we go into sharing. You are already as an administrator for this project. You can change settings. You can set up the automatic file download, but please just make sure you are on top of those um, you know, settings. We're not gonna change them, so this is up to you as well. You can add a token to one of your clients just to view results. They won't be able to change settings, won't be able to download data, nothing like that. So what we do is we create a token. This will create a one-time link. You can copy that, put that in an email, send that to your client, and then they can log in just based on that link. They don't need a login or anything that for SvanNet. Now, the next part, which is pretty crucial, one of the main parts for SvanNet 2, which is why it's such a good feature, is the automatic file downloading. Um, it's very fast now with the new setup of SvanNet 2 project functions. Typically, we used to have a designated PC running all night, 24 hours a day, constantly downloading. Now it's a lot quicker. So what we can do is switch this on, and by default, it is on one minute change this to continuous at the top. So basically we're gonna have data continuously downloading. Uh, you can choose if you want WAVE, CSV, that sort of stuff. For us, it's fine. We'll just use results and logger. Um, by default, the memory scheduled clearing is off. So you'll wanna tick this on. Typically we do a weekly clear Sunday, midnight. We know that no one's working and that's fine. So then we'll hit the changes on that as well. Make sure that the automatic file download is set up and you'll be able to see it set up when these toggles start rotating. So now we press on it, online uh, automatic download enabled, the downloading the files, it'll tell you what files are downloading, what's left, if there's any backlog, it'll, it'll summarize it for you now. The instrument won't clear the memory unless everything is downloaded, so it'll give you warnings about that if there's any issues with file size or corruption, anything like that. 
Now the last part is probably the most crucial. This is where you're going to get your data under data files. So we have a project with two different loggers in there, a sound logger and a vibration logger. You can do them all on one page or you can select one by one. So for example, we have a vibration logger. This buffer file is going to increase over time. So for example, if no measurements are stopped or the settings aren't changed, this file will get bigger and bigger and bigger until Sunday at midnight, until it clears, and then we should have you know, a few megabytes worth of files. So if I hit refresh once again, we just want to wait a little bit until we can get a bit of data transferring. This 1.13 kilobytes is going to get larger. See, now it's already 1.17. So what we do is we jump in, go like this. You have the options to download files, download a CSV, download files to FTP, send files to Dropbox, send files to Dropbox at CSV, and you can delete as well. Once you're done, hit delete. That'll download into your computer's downloads. So we will run through Fan PC Plus on a different video or later. But the last part is the viewing option. So what we do now, we've got all the instruments running, the measurements are running, the auto downloads running, and everything looks good. These are the lights you want to see, blue and a green flashing run status. So last part is the view. Now I selected through the station configuration earlier where I wanted my stations. So you can use this through Google Maps. You can change the logo to your company, for example, on the top left hand of the corner in station configuration. Um, and then you can see both your instruments. So you can see that you can click on them straight away, see what's happening as a bit of a live result. If we scroll down, we have time history based on two instruments. So for the sound logger, I set up SLM, summary results, LAEQ, so we're measuring the average sound as it's running. This is constantly going to move down based on integration time and logger step. And the second time history here that we have is the vibration in PPV. This is all interchangeable, so you can select whatever you want. So, you know, channel 1, profile 1, RMS, sound, channel 3, dead channel, VDV measurements, RMS, time history, all sorts of things. So whatever you want to show your client is what you set up here. And then whatever time histories are stated down below is what the client will see along with the map. And that's basically about it in regards to the units itself. These are the main things, the statuses and those six tabs, those are the main things you're going to be using. So thank you.